People tend to think that under eye creasing can be prevented by just applying a setting powder. Well, look at my eyes on this side and look at my eyes on this side. I use the same setting powder, but one side is creasing and the other side is not. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you why your technique that you're using is causing under eye creasing and how to prevent it. And I'm also gonna show you how setting powder will not stop it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So on this half of my face, I'm gonna show you guys the regular technique that you would usually use to set your under eyes and then on this side I'm gonna show you guys another technique that could prevent your under eyes from creasing but I'll be using the same setting powders for both sides before jumping into the makeup one of the most important things is hydrating your under eyes our under eyes are like balloons when you drain water from the balloon it shrinks and becomes wrinkly but when you put water in it it plumps it up and it becomes nice and smooth the same concept applies to our under eye area so when you you hydrate and moisturize your under eyes it helps in creating a nice smooth base to really help prevent the creasing so to hydrate my under eyes I like using this Ilia radiant priming serum so this is a primer but it works really nice also for the under eyes because it keeps it hydrated and this one is also one that helps reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles then you want to go in with an under eye primer I like using this one by milk makeup so this is the hydro grip eye primer so it's very similar Similar to the hydro grip primer for the skin but it goes under the eyes and it really helps to create that nice smooth base before you apply concealer so as you can see this side looks more moisturized looks more hydrated and this side still is a little bit dry so this is the first step into preventing the under eye creasing so when I apply foundation I avoid placing the foundation on my under eyes because I find that doing that prevents it from creasing sometimes when we apply a lot of makeup on areas on our skin that creases a lot contributes to the reason why it creases because concealer is a complexion like product very similar to foundation I like to avoid foundation on my under eyes because I'm gonna place concealer on that area so on this half of my face I'm gonna apply foundation all over including my under eyes and on this side I'll only be focusing the foundation around my skin and avoid the under eye area so instead of applying the foundation like this I like to focus it on this area and just use the beauty sponge and blend it outwards making sure that it's nice and blended and I like to just avoid the foundation around this inner corner area and around this area right here because I usually get creasing that goes around my nose area and my under eyes so this will prevent the under eye from caking up which will prevent the creasing and then you can use whatever is left which is usually a very small amount to just kind of go over that area to make sure that it's nice and covered up so as you can see there's no foundation under my eye so it leaves my under eye without foundation versus this side where you can see that foundation under my eyes and it's already starting to crease up so when it comes to concealer there's two things to pay attention to the type of concealer you're using and the technique in which it's used dry concealers such as like matte or creamy concealers tend to crease more than like liquid concealers because they're less flexible so what that means is they tend to settle in the under eye creases but they don't move because they're really thick so you want to use a concealer that is more so on the liquid side and I'll demonstrate why in a minute so on this half of my face I'll be using the NARS soft matte concealer this concealer is a thick creamy concealer and then on this half of my face I'm gonna be using the Maybelline super stay full coverage concealer so this one is more so of a liquid concealer so when you're applying your concealer, you want to find a balance between too much product and not enough. The goal is really to just cover up all the darkness around your eyes without caking it up. So where the concealer is being placed is important. Our skin tends to be darker around the inner corners of the eyes, which is why we place concealer around that area is to cover up the discoloration and to brighten it up. You want to focus slightly below the area that creases. If you press on your skin under your eyes, you can feel a bone structure there. You want to place the concealer on that bone structure because the skin around that area tends to be smoother than the skin close to the lash line. Once you feel that bone structure, you want to place a small amount of concealer based on how much discoloration you have around that area and how much you need to cover up. And I also like to place the concealer on the outer portion of my eye just to give my eye a little lift. 
So blending out the concealer is also key. I like using a damp beauty sponge to blend it out because it's more gentle under the eyes and the water from the sponge really just helps with the blending, especially if your under eyes are really dry. If you have oily skin, a flat brush is preferably the best tool, but you can also use a damp sponge. So I start the blending from the bone structure and I gradually bring it upwards. So basically I lift it upwards towards the lash line. This will prevent the concealer from settling in that part of my under eye that tends to crease because we've placed less concealer around that area so literally what I'm doing is I'm just pressing it and blending it upwards as you can see it gradually moves upwards and we want to make sure that everything is nice and blended this concealer is also a full coverage concealer but it's more of a liquid concealer so it really just blends really nicely but it still gives you that coverage so as you can see there's a big difference between this eye right here you can definitely see the creasing is more exaggerated around that area because that concealer has sunk into my fine lines under my eyes and it's literally not moving and on this side you can see that it's less pronounced because we've applied the primer and we use the concealer that can really be manipulated and move around so that it does not settle too much in those fine lines and creases under my eyes when it comes to setting powder the technique in which a setting powder is used is so important this is the biggest reason why your concealer creases. As you can see, there's still a little bit of creasing that has formed under my eyes. If I don't get rid of that and I go in with setting powder, I'm literally setting it the way it looks like with the creases. So how do we prevent that from happening? I start by using the sponge that I use for the concealer, which is this Camel Sponge by e.l.f. Cosmetics. But for setting powder, I like to use the opposite side. So this is the side I use for the concealer and I like to flip it to use this side for the setting powder. Powder. So I like to start by dipping into the setting powder and I like to use a very small amount Then I like to place the powder at the back of my hand and this gets rid of the excess powder Right before I place the powder on there I like to use the side that I use for the concealer to blend out the creasing first Then immediately I flip the sponge and I use the setting powder to set that concealer And I like to do one side at a time so that the creasing is not formed when I'm setting one side So this is what this side is looking like with that setting powder. As you can see, the creasing is a little bit less pronounced. It has a really nice and smooth look. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set this side. So I'm using the same powder, dipping into that powder, and I'm using that same sponge that I used to blend out the concealer in this half of my face. I'm gonna take that and also dip the excess as well. And I'm gonna take that powder and press that right underneath my eyes without blending out that concealer. So now you can definitely see the creasing on this eye. It's definitely more pronounced. You can see that the creasing is starting to form under my eyes. Compared to this side where it's a little bit more smooth, you don't really get much creasing because there's less product. And you can definitely see on this side that there's less product, but my under eyes and the discoloration under my eyes are covered up. And this is why setting powders do not stop creasing because if you're setting those creases, they will stay there regardless of how much powder you put on top of it so this next step is something that i feel like a lot of people don't pay attention to but it's made a huge difference there are many forms of setting powders but the two types of setting powders that i like to use are a loose powder which is what i just applied and then i like to go in with a finishing powder on top of that which is what i'm about to use right now a finishing powder is also a setting powder but its purpose is to really just blur out wrinkles and to really smoothen out your skin so for finishing powder i'm gonna go in with this Maybelline loose finishing powder I love this finishing powder because it gives me a smooth finish so I like to take the sponge that I used I'm gonna dip into this Maybelline finishing powder and I'm gonna set it the exact same way I set my concealer with the loose powder as you can see on this side it looks a little bit more flawless and blurred out more than it was looking like before so this tip definitely adds that blurring look under the eyes and that's why I like using a finishing powder because it takes that extra step into making sure that the under eye does not look creased but you don't want to place too much to the point where it starts creasing and it starts settling in those fine lines and also depending on your skin type you want to select the setting powder that works for you because there's so many different types of setting powders out there for different skin types and it can get a little bit confusing and that's why you need to watch this video right here
here where I go into the details of the different types of setting powders and this video will really help you know what setting powder is best for you. KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping. 